that is independent of the path taken, meaning um, it works over a distance, so you don't have to make contact with it. And it doesn't matter how far you walk or you run or you push it or you whatever, if the work due to that force will stay constant. And a non-conservative force does depend on the path that you take. Like a, an applied force of friction, the longer you apply it, the more work or energy it takes or it gives. Okay, and from there we get to the work energy theorem. And I explained it yesterday by looking on page 2. We said when um, uh, forces act on an object, it gives the object energy. Okay, and that energy there, we can consider that to be kinetic energy. That means it causes it to move. So it gives it movement energy or it gives it a velocity. Okay? Right. Now, we saw that with the second one. Uh-uh. Baita, 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 tiamo. Outside. With the second one, we saw that the energy was reduced. The energy was reduced. Why did the energy go down? Because we added friction. So what does friction do? Friction removed energy. Okay? So we can see... Okay, I'm going to make a note here at the bottom. So we can see here now the kinetic energy decreased due to friction removing energy. The kinetic energy decreased because friction removed energy. Friction took away energy. So now the object will not go that fast. Now it will go slower. Okay, you all understand that. Okay, so from there, from that idea, we get the work energy theorem, which says the net work done on an object, so all the works together, by a net force, sorry, um, is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. So that is how we go to that. The net work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the object. Okay, now that formula will be on your data sheet. So remember, delta EK means the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Okay, then we can also rearrange this formula to get this one here. Okay, where that NC stands for the non-conservative forces. So the non-conservative forces, so all the friction... So that will be friction and applied force and stuff like that. All those forces together, not gravitational force. So not FG. Okay. So it says here on the right hand side, Vn is the only the non-conservative forces. And then the formula changes a bit so that you also have the change in potential energy. So this is just a change in kinetic, this is change in potential as well, but both of them will be on your data sheet. Okay, so it says at the bottom, when external forces are present, mechanical energy is not conserved. Okay, so you will see when they say there's friction or applied force, I will make a frowny face. And I'll say, oh, we can't use that easy, the law of conservation of mechanical energy. We have to use this one. Okay, and then I just explain it again. When there's a net force, the object changes velocity. All right, where is my question? I 
Hi. Um, sorry, that picture must go with that question. Okay, so we quickly going to redraw that picture. So we have a block that's 50 kilograms. And they say this friction to the left is 120, I think. And the applied force to the front is 200. Okay. Now it says, John pushes the 50 kilogram crate from rest. Ding, 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 ding. The initial velocity is zero. It pushes it from rest with a force of so much over a rough horizontal surface. If the kinetic frictional force between the crate and the surface is 120, calculate the velocity of the crate after 8 meters. So they want the final velocity. Okay. So I'm going to fill in here on my right hand side. The initial velocity is zero. The final velocity we want to get. The displacement is eight meters. We have the applied force is 200. We have the frictional force is 120. And we have the mass is 50. So you see there's a lot of information there. That's why these questions can easily count five, six, seven marks. So in this chapter, when a question counts five, six, seven marks, don't think two, two calculations. One calculation is enough. Okay. So the question uh, in the exam will, will read, calculate the velocity of the crate after eight meters using energy principles. Using energy principles. Because you can actually calculate this using... Um, uh, Equations of motion, you can use it, I calculate by using Newton's laws, blah, 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 blah. We are going to use energy principles. Now, because there's friction, you frown, and that is why you're going to use, and you're going to see, I'm going to abbreviate, it, you're going to use the work energy theorem. Okay. Which is, the uh, net work done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. Okay. For the network, you need the force diagram. So we have the applied force, we have frictional force, we have gravitational force, and we have normal force. And we also have that it moves in that direction. Okay. So, the network is the work due to all the forces. Okay, not just in this plane, all the forces. So, you're going to say the work due to frictional force plus the work due to normal force plus the work due to applied force. Oh, sorry. Work due to applied force plus the work due to gravitational force is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Yes. Okay, then we have here F, K, delta, X, cos, theta. You remember how we work out the work? What is the work for the normal force? Immediately I'm going to write down plus zero. Why? Because it's cos 90 degrees. Plus... And then also immediately I'm going to say the work due to gravity is zero. Why? Because gravity is down, the placement is to the right, so the angle is 90 degrees. So this, for this one it's not always, but for this one it's always also plus zero. Okay, can I zoom in at the bottom? Okay, is equal to a half mv final squared minus a half mv initial squared. Okay, while I'm speaking to Tiamo outside, quickly fill in the values and see if you can get the final velocity.
What's wrong? Yes. Good question. Okay, can I speak? Right, few things that I want to go through. Between the friction and the displacement. The displacement is forward, friction is back, so the angle between them is 180. Okay. Between the applied force and the displacement, they're in the same direction. So the angle between them is zero. So the angle between them is zero. Okay. Then we want the final velocity. And then they say it starts from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. So this whole thing becomes zero. All right. So you can see why you can get up to five, six, seven marks in one question because there's a lot of things that you must fill in. Yeah, I think this one will count six marks. One, two, three, four, five, and then one mark for your answer. And Chichi, are you on it? Anything that I must explain to anyone? Yes. What did I type in? Okay. I want to show you that you could have used the other formula as well. Okay. Um, you might not have enough lines, but you can redraw or you can draw in more lines. So this is or. You could have used this formula as well. And I want you to practice or I want you to write down both because in some instances you can only use one of them. You found it. Who took it? Do you call them friends? They play like that boys, I know them. I'm not the first time to do All right, now, when you do this, I want you in your diagram to go to the forces and label which ones are conservative and which ones are non-conservative forces, okay? So in your diagram, the applied force is non-conservative because it's a contact force. The frictional force is non-conservative because it's contact. Tapelo. Tumela. Scrape. No, I'm sleeping. Yeah, you were sleeping. Gravitational force is a conservative force because it's a non contact force. And uh, normal force is a non conservative force. But I'm putting this one in brackets because it's always zero. So it doesn't play that bigger part. Tell me, where's your notes? My notes are in my phone. This is day two, that your notes are not here. Ok. 
Okay, right. So if we look at, I'm going to just zoom out. If we look at the work done due to the non-conservative forces, then you're not going to look at all the forces. You're only look, going to look at those that are non-conservative forces. Okay, so for that, I'm going to say this is the work done due to frictional force and the work done due to the applied force, the only non-conservative forces. Okay, now I am going to be a bit lazy because we already did all the work here at the top. Ne? So I'm just going to write down this in the places of that. Okay, I'm not going to write down this whole formula because we already did it. So I'm going to write down here the FK is 120 times A times the cos of 180 plus 200. So what is the mass? 50. Okay. And then I'm going to write down and say that the potential energy that I fill in here, the change in potential energy is zero. Why do I say that, Vanelli? The height did not change. Okay? It's because the final height is equal to the initial height. So the change in height is zero. So that whole potential energy, the change in potential energy is zero. Okay? And if you type that in, blah, 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 you don't have to do that now. But if you type that in, you get exactly the same answer, 5,06 meters per second. Okay, so you can see you can actually do any one of the two. Sometimes in some instances, one will be easier than the other one. Um, but it's not always to say that the second one is easier. It depends on the question that was given. Okay, let's look. Can I page... The next question is an exam question. This comes from an exam question paper. I just adjusted the values a bit, but it comes from an exam question paper. It says here, a five kilogram crate slides past A at 10 meters per second. So it means there at 10, the velocity, uh, there at A, the velocity is already 10. So it's not from rest. And then continues to slide until it passes D at 15. So there at D, the velocity is 15.38 meters per second. Okay, so it doesn't stop there at D. Our scenario stops, but it actually goes on, 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 on. We're only looking from A to D. A to C is frictionless. That's good news. So A, B, and C is frictionless. Smile. Yay. How does it be 10 and goes down and goes like this and up? Because there's no friction here. It's going to go fast, 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 and then it's going to slow down a bit. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. It's possible. Okay? And then they say the CD offers friction. Frowny face. Is it one thing where the block is in? Yes, this is one block. All right. So, before I'm going to read further... I'm going to look at what type of scenario do I have for each one. Okay? At the first one here, so from A to B, I have no friction. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit. I have no friction and I have a change in direction. So there's no friction and there's a change in direction. Then we're going to use the law of conservation of mechanical energy. No friction, change in direction, law of conservation of mechanical energy.
Would you, Milu, can you tell me that law of conservation of mechanical energy? Yes. All right, then the next one, you see it is, there's obviously no friction. No friction. And it's linear. It's in a straight line. There you couldn't use anything. You could have used Newton. You can use um, this momentum. You can use equations of motion. There's a lot of things that you can use. Okay, and then for the last one, oopsie. For the last one, because there is friction. And because there's a change in direction, we have to use the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem. Okay, going, going. Okay, so at question A, they ask, Calculate the speed at point B, the speed there. So we are considering from A to B. Okay? So I'm going to write here, consider from, oops, consider from A to B. And just for myself, I'm going to write down, because there's no friction and there's a change in direction, I'm going to use the law of conservation of mechanical energy. Okay, so that says the mechanical energy at the beginning is equal to the mechanical energy at the end. Okay, now remember this formula is not on your data sheet. So you can write any one of the following. You can also write this plus this at the beginning is equal to this plus this at the end or MGH. Anyone. You can write all three as well. It doesn't matter. It's just a bit of uh, a waste of time. Okay. Now we fill in our values. I'm going to zoom out a bit. So uh, our mass is 5 kilograms, G is 9.8, the height is 12 meters. Plus a half, the mass is 5, and the velocity, they tell us, is 10 squared. Look at your values in your picture. You have it in front of you. Then on the right-hand side, it is 0 because your height is zero plus a half the mass is five and we want the final velocity squared and tapelo is already on it Yes. 18.31 what? Yes. Okay. Next one. Question B. Is it also, is it 
Yes. yes. But better to not round off than to round off incorrectly. So if you're unsure, rather give four, five, six decimals. Okay. B. Can I go up? Right. B it says, oh, it asks calculate the speed at C. Okay, now let's just quickly check. Is there any applied force here? No, it's sliding. Is there any friction there? No, it's sliding. So there's nothing causing it to go faster, and there's nothing causing it to go slower. So if the velocity here is, what was it, 15 point, no, 18 point three one, what is the velocity here? 18.31. So I know this is a bit silly and a bit like, how does this even happen? But this was how the question was asked in the trick, so they can ask it like this. Okay, so you are just going to say the, the velocity, I'm going to zoom in, the velocity at C is equal to the velocity at P, and that is 18.31 meters per second. And for yourself, you can say no applied force and no friction. Thus, nothing adding or removing kinetic energy. They can ask give a reason, so then that will be your reason. But this will most probably just be a one mark question. Okay, question C. I'm going to go up a bit. At question C, it asks, calculate the work done by frictional force. Frictional, frictional force's symbol is FK. If they ask for the work done by frictional force, then they're asking for the work done by frictional force. Okay. And that is the difficult part, I think, in this question, is knowing what the hell must you do. Okay, so they're not asking you to calculate FK. They're asking you to calculate the work done due to FK. And FK, is it a, a conservative or a non-conservative force? Non-conservative force. Okay, so I'm looking there at CD because that's the only part where there's friction. So I'm going to quickly draw a free body diagram here on the right hand side. Okay, so I have gravitational force towards the center of the earth. Then I have normal force perpendicular to the surface. And I have frictional force in the opposite direction of motion parallel to the incline. Rings a bell. And then I have the movement going there. The displacement is to the right. Okay. So, if I look at my forces, I'm zooming in on the right hand side. If I look at the forces, this is a non-conservative force, but it's, I put it in brackets because yeah, it doesn't actually barrel. This is a non-conservative force, and this is a conservative force okay so again you can do any one of the two calculations no sorry sorry in my head my first thought was i must get the work done due to frictional force and then i said okay that is frictional force delta x cos theta that was my th first thought And if I consider all of my options, I see that I do not have the frictional force. Yes, you can calculate it using Newton's laws. Okay, but that's a long step. Then I have other options as well. I have the net work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy and I have the work done due to the non-conservative forces is the change in kinetic plus the change in potential. Okay, so that's my three options right now. You can do 
the first one or the second one there. One in this case is a bit easier than the other one, but both is possible. Okay, so what I want to do today is I actually want to do both to show you which, how do you do both of them. Okay, let's quickly get there. I am first going to do the first one. The work done due to the net forces is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay, so if I looked at all my forces, it's the work done due to the frictional force plus the work done due to the normal force plus the work done due to gravity is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Yes. No, Kananello didn't. Oh, he's not here today. Huh? No, Kananello. No, I mean like me. Instead of watching it on YouTube, can you like add something? Oh, yes, I can. You and your iPhone. All right. I immediately wrote down that the work done due to the normal force is zero because we know it's 90 degrees. Okay, up until there I went fast because there shouldn't be new news to you. But if there's something I need to explain, you must ask. Okay, let's fill in values. The, ooh, why did I do that? Anyway, sorry. They didn't ask us to calculate that whole thing. They want that. Okay, so you didn't have to, um, uh, uh, not abbreviate, um, elongate that or take it apart. Sorry, doop, 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 doop. We just want that. That is the question. What's the work done due to frictional force? Okay, gravitational force. Let's quickly look at it there. Uh, that tells us the mass is 5 kilograms. Ne? So that will be 5 times 9.8. Then we want delta x. Okay, I'm going to go up to the drawing again. Delta x is this distance there. We don't have that distance, but we do have 30 degrees and we do have 3. So how are we going to get x? Not the tan. I think that gives you five, but I can't remember now. Six. Uh, where do you get two? Mm. This side is three, and this one is six. But how do you know this is six? <laughs> we calculated it to be six. <laughs> All right, so there I get the distance x to be six. I'm going to go back to my calculation so that is times six <coughs> then I need the angle cos it's not cos 30 okay let's quickly look here so if I look at this diagram I have that is FG this angle here is 30 and I want the angle between FG and X so then this is 90, this is 60. What is the angle between FG and X? A is? 180 minus 60. Okay. Right, can you see we're busy with the difficult option here? Because there's lots of extra work to be done. 
Okay, then we have a half, the mass was 5, the final velocity they gave us to be 15.38 squared minus a half times 5 times 18.31 squared. We have extra classes after school with the video. All right, so we'll finish after school. I 